Michael McCall joins us right now, the Texas Republican working in concert. Here's a concept of uh, fair and balanced and being bipartisan. Henry Cuellar, the Texas Democrat, both kind enough to join us. Gentlemen, we have a lot to get into, including what you've been trying to do on the border and meeting with the foreign minister of Mexico, et cetera. But I did want to first talk about this prospect of, of a shutdown. And to you, uh, uh, Chairman McCall, uh, it, it seems like that's inevitable. The only thing in doubt is how long it might last. What do you think? Well, I think that's right. You know, uh, Neil, I've seen this movie many times before. Uh, it doesn't end so well. Uh, shutdown never, uh, I think, benefits the American people or our service members who get their pay docked, uh, the members on the border, CBP, Border Patrol agents. Um, I hope we can get this resolved uh, without a, a long-term shutdown. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we get this done in a bipartisan fashion. Um, and, you know, you just can't get everything you want uh, just one side of the aisle. And so I think you're going to see a Senate version coming back to the House, uh, and we'll see where this goes. Um, but again, uh, another point, Neil, is that they always blame Republicans for shutdowns. And, and politically, I don't see this really working well for my party either uh, if they don't see that we can govern. So uh, on that point, it's going to stick to the Republican kind of argument here that it is four or five who are making it very difficult to, to wrap this up. Uh, and all it takes is one of them, uh, disenchanted about Kevin McCarthy and how he's handling this, to boot him out. What do you think of that? Well, I think that would just create more <clears throat> dysfunction, uh, a lack of leadership. If we oust uh, Kevin McCarthy as speaker, uh, then we go into speaker uh, elections. Um, you know, Kevin has uh, been able to uh, surprise everybody against the odds and get things done. We have a conference right after this interview where we're going to talk about the path moving forward. So I hope uh, we can work together as a team and not be divided. When we're united, we win. When we're divided, we lose. And uh, this, this CR had a lot of border security provisions on it uh, that I uh, personally thought were very good. It came out of the Homeland Security Committee, included, included my Remain in Mexico policy, which cut down on these political asylum claims and, and quite frankly, shut the spigot off to illegal immigration. And yet uh, you had 21 Republicans voting against it. Uh We'll see where that goes. Uh, Congressman Cuellar, on that issue, I know the both of you had a chance to meet with the foreign minister of Mexico, went to the border, went to assess the, the, the situation. Now, you've heard from a number of your colleagues, Congressman, uh, who said that there is no crisis at the border uh, and it's not as bad as it's been portrayed. How do you feel about that? Well, I live on the border. I don't just go visit for a few minutes. Uh, we do have a immigration crisis. Uh, crisis. Uh, security, it's a different thing. Uh, the border is secure when we talk about crime statistics. But when we talk about immigration, yes, we do have a problem. And I've always said, I think Michael McCall and I are on the same page, that if you well, play I'm, I'm defense— I'm sorry, Congressman, I didn't you... understand that. When you say secure, secure to me means— People can't come through like a sieve. Se secure, like safety. If you look at murder, rape, assaults, use of the latest uh, uh, federal officials' uh, numbers, you will see that uh, Laredo, for example, is about two, three times safer than Washington, D.C. The murder rate here no, is no, higher. I, I so I'm understand talking that, about but, crime. but that's not— no, uh, I, I, well, guess, I guess your definition of security and mine are, are no, well, tad different. Well, I, uh, I don't want to argue semantics with you, sir, but, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's deemed dangerous and out of control. Whatever your thoughts on that, I'm just wondering, no. did your meeting with the foreign minister give you some common ground that you guys, uh, you know, found that looks encouraging or not? Yeah, and, and let me just finish my sure. thought. Uh, it, crime, crime statistics, they're lower on the border. Immigration, yes, we do have a problem, and I, I'm, I'm in agreement. We do have a problem with immigration. What we did was talk, uh, Michael McCall and I, as the co-chair of the U.S.-Mexico Interparliamentary Group, what we want to do is to make sure that we push security and immigration policies outside the one-yard line called the U.S.-Mexico border. If we can do it on their 20-yard line, it's going to work a lot better, and that's what we want to do, so stop people before they get to the U.S. border. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. So let's let's do the work outside in the southern part of uh, Mexico, Guatemala. Let's work with Panama. Let's work with uh, Colombia. But let's secure those areas so people don't come over 
to our U.S. border. Now, both of you are more familiar with what's happening at the border than many people who are not even near it. But the, the rap you hear about Mexico, I don't know about the foreign minister, but much has been said of the president, that, um, uh, you know, the soldiers might be there, Mexican soldiers might be at the border, but they're just watching those migrants flooding into our country and don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chairman McCall, I'm wondering, is that the real problem? Yeah, I think Mexico is not fully cooperating to help secure our border. I think uh, Henry's right. We need to push the border out and not play at the one yard line <clears throat> at, at our de uh, at our goal line, but push this thing out. Yeah. I thought the prior administration had this right by uh, stopping all these people coming into the United States by adjudicating their political asylum claims in Mexico. That's what I brought up with the foreign minister. Can we process these migrants in Mexico rather than in the United States? Because, Neil, as you know, once they touch base, then catch and release comes into play. That's what we have over is seven that on Mexico, uh, Chairman? Is million that, to, I want to raise the same point. Is that on Mexico? We're not doing enough to force that on Mexico. Some candidates like Nikki Haley have advised, maybe you just freeze all aid. Uh, to Mexico, all transactions with Mexico uh, because of this, until they change. Well, that was a provision I had uh, in, in uh, H.R. 2, the border security bill. Right. We passed a foreign uh, operations bill uh, where I did just that. It defunds the secretary's salary until he, he puts Remain in Mexico back in place. You know, we'll see if that gets through the Senate, but right. Mexico has a responsibility here. Got it. Real quickly, Congressman Quayer, your point on that, and do you trust Mexico? Well, look, let's look at 2015 and 2019, President Obama and President Trump. Why did the numbers go down in 2015 and 2019? The main reasons they went down was because Mexico was actually using their military folks at their southern border, and they were stopping people before they uh, came in. So there is a way, like Michael McCall and I are saying, there is a way that we can get Mexico to do more. It happened under uh, President Obama 2015. It happened under President Trump 2019. We can do it now, but we got to get Mexico to do its job at the southern border. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both, and you're a shining example of what it's like to work together, whatever party differences, that that is still possible. Um, so that's very encouraging. I want to thank you both. Have a safe weekend. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.